Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this Thursday mountain weather update. All right, we're going to go to Big Sky first, reporting two inches of new snow in the last 24 hours. And air temps around zero. This, uh, this snow was from a tiny little clipper cold front. Um, the next cold front is going to be stronger, 124, 125 and 126. All right, let me take you into Colorado this morning. Here's Steamboat, one inch of new snow in the last 24 hours. You can see some of the cams. Snow is still coming down. Now, the next front, I think, could deliver 8, 9, 10 inches to Steamboat over this weekend. So this weekend's going to be great. We're going to have new champagne powder up there at Steamboat this weekend. Up to Breck, still a little bit of wind and some light snow continuing. They're reporting one inch of new snow accumulation up there at Breck. And man, is it cold. Air temps have stayed in the ice box the last three days. There has been very little warming. It's still 10 to 15 degrees below zero air temp up there in Breck. Very little movement. It's unbelievable. All right, look at radar. Not much happening. A little bit of blue coming out of Alberta and BC. That's going to be our 124 25 cold front. In Colorado, it's almost impossible for the radar to see that, that light snow up there on top of the Continental Divide and the I 70 corridor. It's really shrouded. It sits low. The radar is going to overshoot it but it's there. Uh, up in the northeast, you've got a clipper coming through the Great Lakes with some light snow accumulation. Also, that should help to kick in a little bit of lake effect snow to some of those preferred areas. Here is uh, water vapor at low levels. So oranges and reds are going to be your drier air aloft. Your moisture's in your whites and your blues. You can almost see that tiny little front right there, uh, but that's going to be racing out. So what's next? Well, here comes our stronger front right here. So it's getting set up, it's on the move, and that's going to follow the same trajectory, if not go a little further to the, uh, the west. We come right down through Montana, boom, then it hits a wall. It just gets hung up there over the northern mountains of Colorado, over the high Uintas. And what happens is the front will stretch out. And then on the western side, an area of low pressure, a trough, and the trough is going to take all the energy and consolidate it over California. We will see some snow down through the Sierra, not a lot, but more importantly, we're going to have moisture that develops over the top of Los Angeles and some of the surrounding mountains. Even at low levels, we might see some snow, rain snow up there in some of the mountainous areas. Then that low is going to go on the move towards the four corners. So kind of complicated, um, circuitous, but... Um, that's the way things are going to play out. All right, here's my snow timeline. Best odds of snow, Big Sky, Wasatch, Tetons, Colorado, Interior, BC, Tahoe in the Northeast. So for Big Sky, light to moderate tomorrow. The Wasatch, late 124 light or afternoon. And then moderate in some places might be on the heavy side. We'll see. But moderate is probably a good bet for 125. Tetons look pretty light, 124. Colorado, late 124, 25, 26. Quite a spread. Southern mountains are initially going to be light. I-70 corridor moderate and then heavy over the northern mountains. In fact, most of the accumulation is going to be Vail East, up over the, uh, the high peaks, the Front Range high peaks, and then up into the northern mountains. Uh, interior BC light, uh, Tahoe's light, 125. Northeast is light. Okay, drilling down on Alta, Utah. This is effective about 9,000 feet, the forecast mediagram. So there it is, dry today and then dry early tomorrow on the 24th. Some light snow in the afternoon. The bulk of the snow is on the 25th and maybe early 26. This model cranks out about three inches. It's light. Alta Snowbird, Solitude Brighton, I think could get five, six, seven inches of accumulation out of this. So it should be a good weekend for new snow. A little bit gusty out ahead of it, um, but nothing too bad. 30 to 35 mile an hour winds. High temps today around 16 at 9,000 feet, 23 tomorrow, and then it turns colder with the front coming in on 25 and 26. Um, if you were to say, okay, what about Park City, Deer Valley, Snow Basin, I'd say probably three, maybe four inches of accumulation up there. In Colorado, here's the time height, and you can really see it. The wall of green is coming. If you look for nothing else than green, that's your higher moisture content, your higher relative humidities um, throughout all the layers of the atmosphere. You read that from right to left, so you can see whatever's on the left is coming. Uh, a little bit of green today, this afternoon, with that residual snow from that little tiny front then a little drier for a short time. And then by the time we get into late 24, 25, 26, you've got all of that moisture to work with over the central and northern mountains. And this is actually effective for steamboats. So steamboats up there, and you can see it here in the forecast. I've got steamboat uh, rolling up probably 10 inches, and this is there too, 8, 9, 10 inches. Not out of the question up there at steamboat. Loveland, a little further south over the Continental Divide, Front Range High Peaks, this is cranking out 6, 7, 8 inches. Yeah, I think 6.7 is probably not out of the question. 
uh, A Basin, Loveland, up to Winter Park, um, maybe a little bit less, maybe four or five down in Summit County and up to Keystone. Um, but that'll take us, um, oh, there's Loveland. So there's Loveland right there. I forgot to turn it over. There's Loveland, and that's what I was saying, six, seven, um, maybe eight inches for Loveland Ski Area, A Basin, four or five through Summit County. Okay, let's do snow accumulation over time. Um, so we'll start this at lunchtime today. And notice the light blues over Wyoming, Colorado. Um, that's under three inches of accumulation. You can see that on the scale. There's our clipper running through the, uh, the Great Lakes. Okay, here we are by this afternoon. There's tonight. There's early tomorrow morning. So Friday the 24th, there's our front coming down from Canada running into Montana. Here's lunch, there's the afternoon, there's late on Friday. So by this point, you've got snow over Wyoming and snow developing across the central to northern mountains of Colorado, potentially snow working its, day, its way down I-25 towards Fort Collins, Boulder, and Denver. You've got light snow developing over the top of the Wasatch. Here we are by early Saturday, many of the same areas, a little green starting to pop out, so it could be over three inches, three or four inches in some of these spots during that time frame. Uh, notice the front, though, it gets hung up here, and it's kind of stretching out and reaching back towards the Sierra. That's eventually where that low is going to develop and steal all that moisture out of uh, Utah and Colorado. Um, okay, here is late on Saturday. <laughs> Still snowing in many of the same areas. Some new snow up there rolling through the Great Lakes, uh, headed for the northeast. There's early on Sunday. Look what's happening. That California low is starting to take all the moisture. There's lunchtime on Sunday, some new snow. On the 26th there for the northeast, some light snow. All right, so this is an interesting setup right here. Here's late on Sunday, some snow for Mammoth, but potentially even rain for Los Angeles and maybe some rain snow for even this in the mountains surrounding LA. So this could be interesting. And it's we need the moisture, I mean, obviously, but and then watch what happens to this low. It starts to make its move. So this is lunchtime on Monday. There's late on Monday. Uh, look at the lake effect up in the northeast. Looks like a pretty good period right there if this holds. Um, there's 11 a.m. on Tuesday. Starts to roll out of the four corners. Yesterday we talked about how this low might actually consolidate and sp spin up in southeast Colorado. doesn't appear that's the case today. Okay, my official forecast. All of today through the 26th, we'll start in the Wasatch anywhere from 3 to 7 inches of accumulation. So those, those numbers have trended up. About three up there in the Tetons, four or five Big Sky Bridger Bowl, and then everybody else is very light. Idaho's light. BC's light. Zeroed out over a number of places. The Pacific Northwest has got nothing. Uh, in the Sierra, one inch around Tahoe. Again, not a big deal, but maybe four down in Mammoth. Uh, four for Brian Head. Light snows through southern Colorado, northern New Mexico. Depends on the exact track. Now, beyond this, this one goes through the 26th. So you may have bigger numbers come 27, 28, southern Colorado, northern New Mexico, once that low finally moves its way through. Central to northern mountains of Colorado, that's where most of the action is going to be, especially Vail East and then north, where we could see sixes up there at Loveland, A Basin, Winter Park, fours, five, Summit County, Vail, Copper. Uh, 10 to 12, Eldora, Cameron Pass, Longs Peak, up towards Steamboat. Buff Pass could easily get a foot out of this type of setup. So a great powder weekend ahead, in other words. All right, up in the northeast, very light snow, not much change here. All of today through the 26th, 0 to 2 inches for Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, nothing in Massachusetts. And Snow Ridge, your numbers start to tick up once we kick in the lake effect Um 125, 126, 127. So the numbers would, may even go higher than six by that time frame. Um, white face, a couple of inches of snow. All right, wind on the big western map here. And again, some good snow in a couple of spots. Should be a powder weekend for several resorts. So enjoy that. Guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.